Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen. Welcome to the Geico 15-Minute Moto Podcast Show. I'm joined here by Henry Wiles from the Turner Racing Honda team competing in American Flat Track this season. And it's a gorgeous day here in Daytona Beach during Bike Week. And, Henry, you're going to be kicking off the American Flat Track season down here. Uh, tell me a little bit about Turner Racing and the Honda program and what you guys are looking forward to doing this year. We're obviously uh, looking forward to winning some races and putting in our bid for the championship. Uh, this is a newly formed team, and you know Mike Turner's goal was to bring the heat this year. You know he said we're going big, and you know we, Honda's involved, and there's uh, really no holding back. We're 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 going for everything, and my teammates are even tough. So I'm looking forward to it. So in American Flat Track, there's multiple categories. In fact, there's three, I believe, this year. Tell us a little bit about the category you're racing in and the Honda that you're going to be riding. Yep, AFT singles, and we're riding a 450 Honda. And uh, it's, it's it's pretty pretty standard as far as the engine combination. You know, we've got a little bit of work done to the head and changed the cams around and 19-inch wheel on the front and the back. The suspension lowered down a little bit. But uh, other than that, it's just pretty standard Honda, and uh, you know, we the what's what's key, as you know, in, in all dirt track racing, is really getting the suspension dialed in. So uh, we've really focused a lot on that area this year, and um, it's going to be good. You know, I think a lot of folks might look at your 450 and go, "Well, well that's a motocross bike," but it really kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, there's there's really no components that we change that are that far out of the norm other than taking the 21 inch front rim off and putting a 19 on. So uh, the, it's, it's all the same suspension components, just lower down slightly to get the center of gravity a little bit lower. And, and so this is, becomes a really good entry level category. Obviously you're a veteran chasing championships and all that, but if somebody's looking to get into flat tracking on the pro level, this is a great category to get in, but then as you're working your way through the category, that competition for the title is going to get a lot stiffer. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely the easiest way to become a pro in our sport. Um, but like you said, it's, this is not uh, any longer a stepping stone class like what it was started out to be. Uh, the OEMs and manufacturers have really stepped up their support for dirt track, and they're all wanting that title so to really get the top results you're gonna have to go through a lot of hungry guys the and girls and girls <laughs> that's right because of Shana Texer for example who's, who's very strong in the KTM uh, the great thing about flat track racing is the variety of tracks that you compete on big tracks short tracks TTs and then you mix in the wide variety of surfaces yeah it's all dirt but boy dirt can be very different can it yeah absolutely you know when we go to some of my personal favorite are what we call the cushion tracks you know that's the the horse track type surface and you know that's where really dirt track routes started a lot from you know and you could go run the low line the high line and that cushion gets built up and pushed up the track you can run that edge of the cushion and um, the tracks get really rough which is what I personally like and uh, but but you know as as the sport has evolved, we are racing a lot on clay tracks now. So uh, with the motorcycle racing, kind of compared to the car racing, is you can't quite get the the tracks as wet, and that cushion doesn't quite push up on the clay tracks for us. So sometimes the the grooves can be a little narrow, but that also causes really close dicey racing especially in the 450 class i mean you could throw a, a blanket over about 12 of us last year out here at the volusia half mile you know in talking to some of the uh, other flat track racers about the difference between riding a 450 and say maybe one of the bigger 750 twins there is a different style to how you ride that bike, correct? And, and how you enter the corners. From what I'm hearing, when you ride the big 750, you can really back that thing in. But the 450, you more or less, you're not driving a motorcycle, you're riding one, but you do kind of drive it more into the corners. Isn't that, is that true? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. With these 450s, 
the momentum is, is such a key thing. You know, you don't really have the horsepower to maybe pull you out of a little mistake. So, you know, in with what we found is, like I said, it, the suspension is critical no matter what class or what bike you're riding. But it's, I, in my opinion, even more critical on the 450 because you have to have that thing so locked down. Like you said, you pretty much have to drive that thing in, a, in the corner and just keep it slot card right around yeah. there. It, it, it can't be slipping a lot and it can't be um, wiggling a lot. And also with the difference in the horsepower is the line choice. Sometimes yeah. with the, the twin, you can, you know, maybe go run a little higher line where on the 450, you're just, you're giving up a lot of real estate sometimes. So there's a really fine line and balance there and uh, for a guy like me that didn't have a lot of big track experience on a 450, I definitely had to step my game up to run with some of those, uh, some of the kids or some of the, the regulars in that class. Would you say you had to relearn flat track racing? Yeah, in some ways, absolutely. You know, I, I, I had to, you know, a lot of it carries over, but there's a lot of things that maybe I didn't look at or pay attention to before that are so critical for me to pay attention to now. So I would have thought, you mentioned some of the short tracks and stuff, you really enjoy those, but how much of the TTs do you still, you know, just get excited about? Because let's face it, man, that's been your deal. If you don't know much about Henry's uh, past and his stats, well, you own the TT category when it comes to flat track racing. Outside of you and Chris Carr, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Chris was definitely the, the guy I had to beat. And, you know, once I kind of learned that I could be competitive and win those races, you know, it was really kind of became a goal to be the, the head of that category in, in, in the wins department. And um, so... I, I got that, you know, uh, 14 Peoria TT wins in a row. That really helped me to, you know, secure that uh, title, if you will. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I, I had a lot of motocross riding, motocross background, so I think that helped me uh, kind of get to where I needed to be. And, and uh, I was good on the motocross bike because like you said the, the kind of evolution and the changing of dirt bikes saw you know when manufacturers started building these 450 four-stroke motorcycles that was really the bike that you had to have and, and figure out for dirt track and with my motocross background it was a great fit dude what is the deal with all you motorcycle racers from michigan <laughs> i mean you're a michigan guy right you yeah. got motocrossers like nick way had a great career yep. you got jeff stanton of course was legendary champion then on the flat track side it might be even better with guys like what, parker and springer and and you so what is going on in michigan yeah well i mean you, you look at a guy like Jared Meese, who's from Pennsylvania, he, he said, well, the good guys are from Michigan, so he, he would probably claim he was from Michigan by, by now. Uh, that's where he got most of his national wins from, I think, anyway. And I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, we're not able to ride all year, but the yeah, ice. You guys should be all ice racers, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the ice racing, I, it really is a good crossover for the, the dirt tracking. You know, we're, we're not able to ride all the time, but you can really get so aggressive on the ice. And now the the tires that they build, uh, the our, our crew chief, Brian Bigelow, he is, uh, as far as I know, the man on these ice tires. That's kind of actually how Brian got back into dirt track racing was I heard that you had to have this ice tire from him if you were gonna go win the race. So I was going to the ice nationals that year. I called him up a couple weeks before the race and he built me a tire and you know that kind of opened up our our line of communication and uh you know I, I wouldn't say we were really enemies but we weren't really pals when we raced against each other so it wasn't like you know i'd call him up on the phone but uh yeah i i uh, eventually that later that year got him sucked back into dirt tracking <laughs> and he helped me get uh, second in the twin series that year so i was pretty excited about that but you know, there again, with the, the ice racing, it's, it, you can be so aggressive in how you ride the motorcycle. And 
if nothing else, it's a phenomenal workout. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're not ice fishing. You're actually outside doing yeah. some fun, right? Um, you're kind of in an interesting place in your career. Right, you've been at this for a while. You have had great success. You're not the youngest guy, but you're not the oldest guy out there. Still, plenty of laps on your body. Uh, you have to go. What do you, I, obviously you want to be a champion, but what other goals have you set for yourself? Well, you know we've got a, a three rider team this year, so as hard as it is to, well, as easy it is it is to be a racer and be selfish. You know, you uh, and, and look at what my goals are. You know, we also have goals for the team. And really, since we've been uh, testing together as a team, uh, I don't really think we have a weak link on this team. So, uh, you know, it, it's a goal of mine to win races, but also to be racing against my teammates when I do win those races. And, um, you know, is, and as far as that goes, it's, it's also to, you know, since I'm still in this sport, it's easy for me, I think, to take a little bit of time and, and talk to some of the younger kids coming up that, you know, they're, they, they might be looking at me and uh, or, or looking for advice. So it, I think it's easy for me to make some people's days and, and, and try to do some coaching along the way. You are um, a student of the game. You love the history of flat track. Uh, what's the coolest thing you've learned about this sport? You know, I guess I don't really, I'd have to think about that one. That's a great question. You, you put me on the spot. Well, is, is there <laughs> something that maybe you didn't know that surprised you? Or did you learn something about one of your past heroes that you went, wow, I didn't realize Kenny Roberts did this or uh -huh. Mort Lawwell did that or, you know, whatever it might have been? Yeah, well, it's sometimes I think interesting to me what you might hear on some of the behind the stories yeah. or behind the scenes stories and how serious we are now in racing and how much fun some of the top guys used to have back in the day. Now it's, you won't see any of us hanging out late nights having yeah. uh, maybe a few too many cocktails <laughs> or brews or anything like that. But uh, e even with that being said, those guys would show up and throw down. And I think a lot of times, you know, I've been asked what would happen us now and those guys back then, us taking things real seriously, training, you know, riding hundreds of miles a week on pedal bikes during the week, all that type of thing. It's, uh, it would still be close racing. I mean, we're not, we're not gonna crush that older generation. I mean, there's just the talent that yeah. they had and you can see it the styles changed the bikes are a little more locked down they used to ride them way sideways but they also used to be on the cushion tracks and um that's a little bit more of the style on the cushion tracks. so uh, you, you can never really go back in time but man it'd be fun hey, if cool, we could <laughs> my guess is king kenny on that tz 750 yamaha even with you guys out there it'd still be banging off the hay bales in indy right up front giving you guys all you can handle, right? Absolutely. It'd be fun. Hey, thanks for joining us here, and best of luck in the 2021 season. Thank you. Henry and the gang, they have, what, 17 races, I guess, yep. across the country. So try to get out and see an AFT race if you can, American Flat Track. It's a great way to go racing, take the family, and get out and enjoy some motorcycle races. I'm Ralph Shaheen. Thanks for joining us here on the Geico 15-Minute Moto Podcast Show. See you soon. Just a reminder that a new episode of the Geico 15-Minute Moto Show drops every Friday. Watch it for free on Speedsport.tv or subscribe to the audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform.